Okay, moving on to the last and final segment of today's show. Uh, let's start here. In the NFL, I'm always a big believer in the statement that your window to win a Super Bowl is never as big as you think it is. So what that means is when you're knocking on that doorstep, when you're very close to going to the Super Bowl and you're in the AFC or the NFC championship game, I think you really have to take advantage. And if you lose a heartbreaking game, I guess you could say, you know, depending on how the season went and how the circumstances are, wow, we were really thankful to be here. You know, we, um, you know, overall, even though it didn't end the way we wanted it to, overall, it was a great season. And even though sometimes it's okay to say that, you really never know deep down if you're going to get back. Think about how the Jacksonville Jaguars feel. Yesterday, they uh, they traded Yannick Ngakwe, who is their top defensive lineman, and he was the only one of the only remaining members of that Jaguar team that lost to the to the New England Patriots in Foxborough in that 2017 AFC Championship game. Over the last couple of months, publicly, him and the front office have had their beefs. They've had their issues. So that really was not a surprise at all to uh, see him get traded uh, from Jacksonville to Minnesota. But then this morning, they decided to tr- uh, to cut Leonard Fournette. Uh, Fournette was a running back um, they drafted, and he was in that uh, 2017 draft. And we're going to get to that 2017 draft a little later and the impact I think that really has had on this Jacksonville Jaguar team. So Fournette and Ngakwe are both gone. And the question is, how exactly did the Jaguars get uh, get here? How did they get from losing in the 2017 AFC Championship game to now this season where they could be, you know, one of the worst teams in the league? And in the last two seasons, the Jaguars had an 11 and 21 record. And it's crazy because going into the each of the last two seasons, and not as much last year, but at least two seasons ago, they were a team that a lot of people in the media were picking to go to the Super Bowl. And in that time, Tom Coughlin, he came back. And I think really when you ask like where did it start to go wrong with this Jaguar with excuse me, with this Jaguar team, Tom Coughlin in the front office is you know, really the first thing that comes to mind. You totally understand that Tom Coughlin won a Super Bowl or or he won two Super Bowls as the head coach of the New York Giants. He was also the first head coach in the history of the Jacksonville Jaguar franchise and led them to an uh, an AFC Championship game appearance early uh, in his tenure. So Tom Coughlin is a guy that has done a lot for this Jaguar franchise. In that time as well, Jalen Ramsey gets traded because of some personal issues with him and Tom, him and Tom Coughlin. The season ticket sales have really gone down, and they're uh, playing two games next season in London, leading to more speculation that, all right, like, is this Jaguar team going to move because the trajectory really isn't looking so good? But here's the thing with the Jaguars. You know, when they lost that AFC Championship game, uh, at least after that loss, they thought, okay, we still have a bunch of young pieces on this defense, and, um, you know, we could really do it. But there are a couple reasons why this whole thing just didn't work out. Apparently, the locker room was divided. There were some players on the 2017 team that had prominent roles who weren't good influences after that. Apparently, linebacker Telvin Smith was one of them, according to sources. I'm reading this from a CBS.com article. When veteran Paul Puzlozny was there to lead, Smith was a model player who respected Puzlozny the man, which is something Telvin Smith openly talked about. But when he retired after the 2017 season, that was uh, Puzlozny, Smith became an issue in the locker room and and his influence bled over to some of the younger players until he surprisingly walked away last year. I remember when Telvin Smith walked away and I kind of said to myself like that's a very interesting you know move he this is one of the better young linebackers in the league and he was a big part of that Jaguar defense and the fact uh, that he just walked that was really surprising uh, for me to see going back to Tom Coughlin though as I mentioned earlier he was really the one that built this Jacksonville Jaguar franchise from scratch he was the franchise's first head coach He was hired in 1995, and he really had control over everything, um, you know, with an iron fist. You you saw the fear was evident when he led, uh, you know, the Giants to those two Super Bowl teams back in the day. And 
as good of a head coach he was, I don't think he was that great of a of an executive. And which that's really why the Jaguars owner Shahid Khan brought um, you know, Coughlin back was not because of that, because he was, you know, really the guy that did so much to build this Jaguar franchise. And it's interesting because when you look at Tom Coughlin, it's it's a, it was a hard situation because he's done so much for this Jaguar team, but he also made some strange personnel decisions. He drafted Leonard Fournette, and this is another thing I wanted to talk about here as one of the main factors that contributed in why the Jacksonville Jaguars just why this whole thing hasn't worked out in the last couple of years. In 2017, during the draft, that was the year before they went to the AFC Championship game. They take Leonard Fournette number four overall. These were some of the other just running backs taken in that draft. Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara, Kareem Hunt, James Conner, Tariq Cohen, Marlon Mack, Aaron Jones, Chris Carson, and Austin Eckler was undrafted. And here's the crazy thing. At the time, those Jaguar teams thought they had a quarterback. They thought that Blake Bortles may have been the real deal. Not the real deal, but a guy that at least could have won games for them in the significant to near future. So they also don't, let's not forget, they could have had Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson. A lot of people like to rip on the Bears for their decision to take Mitchell Trubisky over Mahomes and Watson. And I get that. That was bad. But at least they took the right position. The Jaguars could have had either of those guys as well and passed on them because, yeah, they believed in Blake Bortles. So that really wasn't good at all. And they also let Allen Robinson walk in free agency. So that was another move that when you look at Robinson, he was really good in Jacksonville. He developed some good chemistry with Blake Bortles and they decided not to re-sign him. But it's interesting because Tom Coughlin was bad, but it's not only those personnel moves that ruined it. You know, though it wasn't really only those personnel moves that is the reason why the Jaguars are where they are today. Coughlin was always an old school coach and he was on the practice field nearly every day, almost in the middle of drills. Doug Marone yielded to that because he had no choice, but it really wasn't a good look for the players. So that asked the question, like, it almost was made it seem like Tom Coughlin was not only the GM, but also the coach or both again. It also didn't help that Tom Coughlin, you know, didn't really like that player, uh, like at the fact when uh, players followed, didn't follow his way. Jalen Ramsey um, ripped a litany of players in the GQ magazine story in the summer of 2018, and Coughlin, Coughlin really didn't like that. And he already hated the fact that Jalen Ramsey didn't take part in offseason workouts. Instead, he actually chose to train at home in Nashville with his father. So the fight was on, and it was a star player against the football decision maker, and it came to a head when Jalen Ramsey got into a sideline shouting match with Doug Marone last season in Houston during a game. And I remember watching that during the game, like, shoot, like, what exactly is going on here? I thought going into last year that Blake Bortles really was the problem for this Jacksonville Jaguar team. I thought he was the main reason why they really weren't performing, or in, in 2018, excuse me, they didn't perform. And going into last year, I didn't expect Nick Foles to be, you know, this Pro Bowl quarterback that was going to lead the Jaguars to a Super Bowl championship. But I'll admit, going into last season, I actually did pick the Jacksonville Jaguars to win the AFC South because I thought the surrounding talent around Nick Foles was good enough. And I thought, I didn't, you know, expect Nick Foles to be some kind of god, but I kind of thought that around him with Leonard Fournette, you know, with the uh, DJ Chark emerging as a top receiver, with the talent they have behind uh, Brandon Linder and Cam Robinson on their offensive line, uh, and the, obviously all the top names they had on defense, I thought that would be good enough. But unfortunately, there were just some bigger issues at the top of the um, organization. And when you look at the demise of the Jaguars, Obviously, Jalen Ramsey has a lot to do with it, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't exactly that well liked by his teammates. In fact, apparently him and AJ Boye, who got traded to the Denver Broncos in the offseason, um, you know, they didn't really get along uh, that well. And the Jaguars have really just, you know, they really haven't handled their, their franchise well. And when you look at the, their two decisions that they uh, made this week, 
or really not even this week, but the last two days. So yesterday they trade Yannick Ngakwe to the Minnesota Vikings. And if you're not familiar with Ngakwe, he's a really dynamic pass rusher. He could get to the quarterback uh, pretty easily. And I think he's going to make a big time impact for that Minnesota Viking team. He was only traded for a second round pick. Uh, so really not that much. But I think when you look at this Jacksonville Jaguar team and their reasoning behind the decision. I think when you look at it, yeah, this team, they had a bunch of talent that they obviously don't have anymore. But the problem is, is that they just haven't really built their franchise the right way. When you have all these star players, you at least have to build around some of them and lock some of them up. And obviously it wasn't going to be Jalen Ramsey when you considered, you know, everything that went on um, with him, you know, uh, you know, and his attitude, everything we've just uh, spoke about there. But at the same time, like when you look at it, they still shouldn't be this bad for this long. The Jaguars feel like one of those cursed organizations. And I think like for me, Leonard Fournette really just confirms that. He was really the last person remaining from that team that went to the AFC Championship game against the New England Patriots in 2017. He was kind of that last guy there. And it uh, they actually tried to trade him during the draft. They really couldn't get anything back for him. So the, 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 the demand for Fournette around the league really wasn't that high. And I think when you look at Fournette, there are a couple teams that could possibly come to mind. The Bears lost David Montgomery. Maybe they could take a look at him. I think the Steelers are another team when you consider James Conner and all his past uh, injury uh, history. You could also look at the Buccaneers and their um, running back situation right now with Ronald Jones being the top dog there. He's kind of unproven. So I think there are plenty of teams that could possibly consider uh, bringing Leonard Fournette into the mix. It's just at the same time, though, the uh, the fact that Doug Marone is still the Jaguars coach is pretty crazy. I think it's a lock that he will be fired after this year. I think when you ask me right away who is the, you know, your best bet for the worst team in football, the Jaguars are probably the first team that comes to mind. And it's actually unfair for Gardner Minshew because I said this a lot about him. If a lot of team... If a lot of team a lot of teams would take the season Gardner Minshew had last year from their rookie quarterback that they took in the first round. Like if Daniel Jones st statistically had the same exact season that Gardner Minshew did last season, I think Giant fans would be thinking to them to themselves, "Hey, we got a pretty good quarterback and we have a guy that's a first round pick that, you know, a former first round pick that we're progressing with and we could use pretty well. I just don't think the Jaguars are going to give Gardner Minshew a fair shot this year when you consider the talent that they're building around him. As much as I like DJ Chark, let's face facts, this team is really trying to rebuild and uh, they, they just showed it by getting rid of Leonard Fournette. So it's been a super unfortunate situation uh, with the way this franchise has been built if you're a fan of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And this year you hope that, you know, you just hope to get some answers. You know, you're a rebuilding team. Obviously, you will have uh, if if everything goes as we can as we think, you're gonna have like a top three pick. Maybe you'll take Trevor Lawrence. Maybe you'll take um, you know Justin Fields. And maybe this season your goal should be let's find some guys that we could pair with those guys that we could build a core with. So it's been super unfortunate if you're a Jaguar fan, but that's what happens when your team isn't building the right way.